Hello chess lovers, Surnan here and in this video I want to share with you another spectacular attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is English chess grandmaster Jonathan Spielmann and the game was played in 1988 in Reykjavik at Reykjavik World Cup. This is a game played in round 4 and Tal opened up with e4, d6 by Spielmann, d4, g6, black goes for modern defense, knight f3, bishop g7, Bishop e2, knight f6, knight c3, after which both players castled kingside, and c5. With this move, black is inviting white to enter the lines of Benoni defense. Although playing bishop e3 and then recapturing on d4 with the knight and transposing to Sicilian dragon, the classical variation is also playable, but in the game we see d5, and this is more like Schmidt Benoni, you know, where white is not going for c4 and Rara is developing the queenside knight. Uh, knight a6 by Spielmann is bringing the knight on c7, from where it will support the advance of the b-pawn, and also after playing e6, black can put a useful pressure on uh, d5. Uh, bishop f4 by Tal. Well, a theory recommends a4 in order not to allow b5, uh, but Tal decided to try something different and we have bishop f4, b5. By sacrificing the queenside pawn, black is managing to win white central e-pawn. Uh, but in this case, white is managing to open up the rook's path and now will put a very useful pressure down the semi-open e-file. Knight goes back on f6, h3, preventing any bishop g4 jumps. Rook e8, rook b1, a5, queen d2, queen b6. Black wants to go for bishop a6 and wants to recapture on a6 with the queen. That was the idea of queen b6. Thus, in that case, black will have control over c4 square, not allowing white pawn to occupy that square. Rook e3 by Tal, bishop a6, after which the exchange of light squared bishops on a6 followed, and rook e1, by doubling up the rooks on the e-file, Tal is starting to put pressure on e7. King f8, uh, this is a passive defense. Playing queen c4 is better. If rook takes e7, then after the exchange of rooks on e7, black can go for queen takes a2. And bishop takes d6 is not possible because of bishop f8. Instead, in the game we see king f8, and there comes knight g5, queen b7, although playing h6 and kicking away this knight is even better, you know. Black is attacking both pawns, and with c4 white is neutralizing both threats, queen b4. At this point it was high time to play h6, h6, and then knight g8, this is a very solid defense. Instead, Spielmann panicked offered the exchange of queens, which of course Tal rejected. With queen e2 he both protected the pawn on c4, and what is more important, he formed a battery and he is hitting on e7. We have a powerful weapon, and this cannon is now ready to shoot. h6, which is tapping into a marvelous combination. At this point there is also a very nasty threat, bishop takes d6, you know, for example, if you protect the pawn on e7, then bishop takes d6, can follow, and then knight takes h7. It's a destructive move, uh, after which black's position collapses quickly. According to Stockfish, at this point, knight takes d5 is good. Uh, you are sacrificing the queen, but in return is getting a bishop and a rook against the queen, and a very solid position. Uh, instead, uh, we see h6, and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find Tal's next moves. Ready? Well, everything is ready for the heavy blow, and Tal went for knight takes f7, a move which I am sure you managed to find. King takes f7, rook b3. Following the right move order is very important in order not to allow black to give up the queen and then capture on g5. Uh, what is interesting at this point, rook e7 is not good because uh, black king can hide and now it's black who is prevailing. That's why after king takes f7 we see rook b3, queen a4, queen e6 check 
also taking under control this g8 square not allowing black king to escape and there comes rook b7 what a lovely maneuver right guys white queen not only managed to occupy this e6 square but also by switching the rook from the seventh rank is now creating devastating threats for example bishop takes d6 can be a nice threat you know something which we are going to see in the game after queen takes c4 bishop takes d6 actually followed uh by the way i forgot to say that at this point playing knight g8 is better although even in this case of course white has better chances bishop takes h6 can be a threat also bishop takes d6 so in the game we see queen takes c4 and there comes this marvelous bishop takes d6 the bishop is untouchable because of the mating threat knight goes back on g8 rook e3 switching the rook into the attack from the third rank uh, bishop f6 rook f3 king g7 and finally we have bishop takes e7 rook takes e7 rook takes e7 knight takes e7 queen takes f6 check well with here then rook f7 was winning and then queen takes g6 in the game we see knight takes e7 and queen takes f6 check king g8 another check king h8 queen takes e7 and uh, after rook f7 finally spielmann resigned now black should give up his queen otherwise there are mating threats that's why at this point spielmann extended his hand a very very impressive game by michael tal the way he managed to switch his rooks into the attack from the third rank was simply awesome uh, hope that you enjoyed this game feel free to share with your friends as well and in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle the task is to finish up black king as usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section feel free to check out my early uploads as well we'll see you in my next video